Thank you for listening to me. Now, I've lived in the Fairham area virtually for, well, have lived here for my entire life. Um, and I was asked, well, we, it was put, were we thinking about this plan completely the wrong way round? Now, the main artery on the south coast is the M27. Every time you try and fill below the line, we're backed up against the sea, you can't keep poking stuff south of the M27. Wellborn, which directly affects me, but, you know, fair enough, that is north of the M27. If you're going to go south of the M27, you're just going to cause more bottlenecks. I live off Down End Road, and tonight, left at about half past six, walked, because the traffic was queued up, up past the motorway, all the way down to Porchester, as far as I could see. I expect some of those cars are probably still there. Walked all the way to here for this meeting. Now, there are proposals to put another 500 houses in off the side of Downing Road to filter through there. You just can't keep poking them in. Also, this is a completely different thing to, but to do with your planning, with your rather impressive pie charts, percentage of income, etc., and ageing population, you tell us that an extra 5,000 people are going to be over 85 years old. QA, my father had an accident not so long ago, had to go to QA, had to wait in the ambulance outside. You can't cope with the, what the infrastructure you've got at the moment. If you have an animal, it's built out from the skeleton, and then you put the fat on it. You can't put the fat in and hope all the bits will join up afterwards. It's got to be concerted planning. You can't keep poking in every little corner south of the M27, A27 corridor. The uh, A32 top bottleneck, the market roundabout, I think in my lifetime I've seen that roundabout, it's not even a roundabout anymore, it's now a home for lost traffic lights. The, um, that has been remodelled so many times, it is like having sand and a child digging in sand on the beach. It will just fill up, it doesn't matter what you do. You've spent a lot of money on the A27 going up past the technical college. Apart from looking like a different coloured piece of tarmac, it's exactly the same as it was. I don't know how much that cost, but it took you two years to put that through. You can't keep developing south of the A20, M27. You've got to go north. So well, the, the borough has to accommodate its housing need, is point one. And the borough happens to be 18,500 acres. A thousand of those acres are well worn. There's not much more than that north of the M27. And Wellborn will be 6,000 houses by the time it's finished. So it cannot be avoided. I fully accept what you're saying about development south of the M27, but that is where the borough is. In Gosport, and they too have a housing need, a significant one, more than they appear able or willing to accommodate within Gosport, that is entirely south of the M27. So are many other places, but they have to accommodate housing. And if the local planning authorities can't plan that housing, what they don't plan themselves will be done to them. So it isn't something, you know, it, it is an interesting discussion to have and what would be the better way of doing it. And yes, north of the M27, would clearly be a better way of doing it. But if there isn't any land there within the borough of Fairham, then you cannot do everything you want to do north of the M27. It isn't physically possible. Each local planning authority area has to accommodate its own housing need. It can't look across the country or the county to other people to take it. If you can't, if you, sorry, if you can't fit well, the people can't function properly within the space that you've got provided, you are full. You've either got to change how you move the traffic about. I mean, a bus service is one thing, but that is really a stopgap. I mean, we 
we even had a tram system in Fairham up to just after the First World War. That would be a much better idea. You know, a constant tram, people get a tram from Portsmouth to Southampton or wherever. But until some national government invests in infrastructure and just hopes that a builder who only wants to build and flog a house is going to chip in towards some road widening, it's never going to work. You're just looking at it from the wrong side. Yeah, well, I accept your concerns, I share your concerns, I live here too. But the issues are we have to accommodate more homes and we have to do it somewhere, somehow and we have to get the maximum number of, the maximum amount of money out of developers to be able to do it. Fortunately, these arguments don't come along too often. With the exception of Wellborn, the last time we had debates like this was 20 years ago. That was the last time we allocated sites for development within Fairham. We now have to do it again, and we have to allocate sites. It's a matter of where those sites are and what infrastructure we can extract from them. You know, don't think that the people making the decisions are immune to the problems. We honestly are not. We have to do it. And if somebody through this consultation exercise comes up with some amazing solution to it but isn't the naive sort of comment, we're full, because that isn't something that's going to wash with the planning inspector, then we need to make the best of it that we possibly can. But fortunately, these decisions don't come along every week. As I said, it's two decades since we last had to allocate greenfield sites around Fairham, with the exception of Wellborn.